Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to carry on with the uh, the B44 that I'm working on and we're going to do the swinging arm mods. But before I tell you about them, let me take you outside to have a look and see what's happened there. Plus, it's bloody cold. I think it was uh, 12 degrees Fahrenheit last night here. What's that, 20 degrees below freezing? So anyway, uh, as I say, we're gonna uh, look at the mods on this. So let me bring you in closer so you can see a little more easily what we're going to do. The modification we're gonna do here is to take out the existing silent block bush and replace it with one of the later needle roller bearings. First job therefore is to get the sound block out, which is always a pain. Um, I had a quick go at pressing it out, but it didn't want to move as I expected. So what I'm going to have to do is the rubber part I'll burn out so that we get the, the center of the bushing out. And then with a small grinding tool, I'll go in and make a little uh, groove in this outer part of the bush and then with a punch I can collapse it and get it out and then we're out of there. Then what we need to do, this here is just slightly under one and a quarter but the bearing is an inch and a quarter. So we're going to ream this out to an inch and a quarter to fit a bearing on each end. Now on the B50, B25 there is an end cap steel one to uh, make the, the lengths upright so the pressure's on the center of the bearing here. And there's a, like a dust cap thing and there's an oil seal in there. So we're gonna have to think of a way of doing that. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be an inch and a quarter. The center piece is one inch, which is where we want to be bearing on when we bolt up. So we're going to get a one inch washer which will go there. So let's put this in here like that. A one inch washer which will go there. Then an O-ring which goes around that. And then a one and a quarter inch washer which will go on there. And there will be our seal. And the one and a quarter inch washer is bearing on the one inch washer is bearing on the tube. So we're also gonna need, as always, a tube in the center to go through to match up with this one. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to measure the length of this and then deduct from it these two washers, the two of these, well four washers I suppose I should say, the length of two of these and then deduct that from this total length and that will give us the length of this tube which we'll then cut and square off. So that's the, uh, the actual modification, but this being a B44, the first thing you should always do is check the swinging arm. Because these things are a little on the flimsy side. There you go. Well, it must be a quarter of an inch out. A little bit you could live with, but that I think is a little excessive. So we're gonna to have to um, bend this side down a little bit. Um, this tube is pretty thick, so I don't think it'll just go in the press. Plus it'd be a little bit awkward in the press. So I think what I'm gonna do is just heat it up a little and pull this down. I'll probably clamp this to the table like so, heat it up a little bit, pull that down, so you can even see it there. That's where the... And get that right. Then we can go ahead 
and get those out. So let's get started. We're all set up. So let me just show you this. What I've got here. I'm hoping you can read these. So the bottom of this it's 19 and 3 8 So the bottom of this one 19 and 5 8 So my eye judgment there was pretty good, quarter inch. So I've got this stuck up so I can heat in here and then be pressing on that to get it down to the 19 and 3 inch. 3 8 inch mark. I'm not going to uh, attempt to get it exactly correct. As I say, a, a little bit out we could have lived with, but I just don't want a quarter inch. So let's get stuck in here, make some fire. and three-eighths. Everything's still looking nice and straight there. You know you could have done this as a press as I said, it would need a bigger press than mine and also as usual I'm trying to do these things the way you could do it at home so consequently nice big clamp, bit of heat, there you go. So anyway that's straight, we'll let it cool down. Then I'm going to take this outside. Yes, just for you I'm going to go out in the snow and the cold because the one thing you do not want to do is burn these silent block bushes out in the workshop. Not unless you're going on holiday for a couple of weeks and you can leave an extractor fan on. So let's let that cool down. I'll get the rubbers burned out and then we'll come back and see about taking the uh, outer part of the bushing out. So I changed my mind and decided I'd show you how to do this. Uh, the snow probably going to play havoc with the uh, with the exposure but so all you do is get yourself a good flame and set the, the rubber burning I've already taken one out and you can see the smoke starting and it smells. It's horrible. Of course, if you're the type that likes bonfires and things, this is great. Now, what you'll find happens. Strangely enough, is that the inner part of the bush works its way out. And what we should be able to do is just pull that out like that.
and there we have it and now I am going to go up the house have a cup of tea and a couple of hot dogs so I will see you shortly here we are one cup of tea and two hot dogs with uh, hot Texas relish on them later you can see the size of the hole now all we've got is the outer part of the original silent block bush in there so what we're going to do is, is break that out now but I thought what I'd show you while we're here is this we are Fourteenth hour off being being right, so fourteenth hour is good enough for me. So let's go over to the vice. All right, got my safety glasses on. Got a little grinding tool. Yeah, yeah, dirty stuff. Anyway, you get the gist of this. I'm just going to keep battering away until I get it out. But I'll break it all out. It doesn't matter if you score the inside a little bit because, as I say, we're going to ream a few thou out. So, let me press on with this and uh, I'll come back when I've got them both out. I got them out, as you can see. But you know the phrase, these things are sent to try us. There's the one you saw me battering and swearing at. Took me ages to get it out. There's the other one, look. Came out as it should. Ground through and it split, it just broke open. And then I was able to t turn the top over just a fraction. Tiny little bit of the top. Got over it with a pair of pliers. Out it came. There you go. All right, next thing is for us to set this up in the mill. Sorry for those of you who don't have a mill, you might think of something else. Uh, and so we can ream this out. Here's the setup in the mill. It was too tall to be able to put it in the vise uh, and I wanted it in there because of course the vise is all trammed in and is square and everything to what I want. So what I've done is I've got two big parallels and a piece of tube same diameter and I've extended the parallels out and it's clamping on this tube and on that. What I've also done here is got some shims and got it clamped down at this end. Then, what have we done with this? What have we done with it Michael? Then you take your electronic, there it is, excuse me, level
and we uh, get ourselves set up so that it's going to be level in this direction and in that direction. We're fine that way. Oh, there you go, must have been just a bit of paint or something. And we're fine that way. So if those two planes are both leading zero, it must be vertical. Okay, excuse me again. Now the next thing we need is, is how deep to go. We're going to go an inch and a quarter, which actually takes us down to the little collar here. But we're going an inch and a quarter because this is an inch and the two washers together make about a quarter. Actually they make a little less, which is what we want. They make two, three, four. So that's 16 thou less. And that is nine, nine, two. So there's another eight thou. So there's 24 thou, because what we don't want is for this outer washer to be pressing on the bearing. All the thrust, all the tightening's got to go through the center. So if we had this not in uh, deep enough, then when we tighten everything up, that would press on the bearing. It would also be pressing on the center, so nothing would work. So, let's get ourselves into position. Now I have this set up. Uh, so I'm just bringing it back to zero here. Come on, zero, zero, two, one, zero. Now then, that was just to get us approximate. We unfasten the uh, the table. Right, let's tighten the table up so it doesn't move. We're actually only taking a few foul off this. So would have been nice. Well no, I couldn't have gone all the way through because I need to have the steps, but gab in here and I didn't set the, the zero for this. just drilled out to size and you have to take just a little bit off this you could take something out the inside of these but the easiest thing it's only a couple of thou is just to take a little off there you could do it with some emery basically it's so little that's got to come off so the way this is going to go together is big washer little washer 
and the o-ring then that piece goes on then the centre piece will go on and then we're going in reverse that goes on little one goes on o-ring will go on which of course will press up against the, uh, the bearing but won't you put any real tension on it and then the big washer so what we need to know is how big this is going to be so what I've done is I've measured the swinging arm but I also measured the gap in between the two mountains on the frame and those measurements all come out as follows this is going to stand up the gap in the frame hang on let me have a quick look see make sure you can see this yes the gap in the frame is 8 and 5 sixteenths and the actual width of the swinging arm is 8 and 3 sixteenths so there's like a sixteenth gap but don't forget when this is all bolted up they're going to move in slightly so what we need to know is how much space to fill this up so with everything stacked up big washer on each end small washer on each end and the two spacing pieces that comes to four inches so what we need is a piece in the middle of that to bring it out to fill this up and uh, if that's four inches what I've taken this as is eight and a quarter so it's going to stick out a little bit of this which is just nice and it's also going to give us a little fraction for that to pull up tight so if we're saying the total we want to fill is eight and a quarter and this bits four then we need a four and a quarter piece in the center so I will cut that to length and just face it off and make sure it's nice and square and exactly the right length and that would make it ready for the uh, the swinging arm to go in the frame but then there's one more thing we've got to think of and uh, that is how we're going to get some grease into these bearings now if we just put bushes in if we were to put a bush in each end we could have drilled through and just put a grease fitting in so I've come up with a way of doing it let me make this piece here first and then we'll, we'll move on to that and there you can see it fitted in we've put it into the frame so we've got our two washers the uh, bushing that the bearing runs on the spacing piece the other bushing the other two washers all just nicely fitted in we do have one more piece to do which I forgot to mention we have to make just a little sleeve to go on the outside of this because of course if we just put that into the swinging arm it'll just drop to the to the bottom of the swinging arm and you won't be able to get that through there's always something on here on the b50s and b25s it's this little tinny sort of thing that goes round that when you're trying to get them out they, they always get destroyed or at least i've always destroyed them so if someone knows of a way of getting them out and the bearings out i'd be very grateful so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn up a little piece in aluminium a little uh, sleeve to go on that in the center just a tight fit just to keep it right again here's uh everything put together washers with seals at the end um, there's the piece I put in the middle the little sleeve just to uh, take this up to the same idea as the, the cross piece so it doesn't fall down in there uh, I made it out of steel and aluminium simply because when I looked in my bits box I had a piece of steel that length and already drilled out to three quarters so I just bored it out a little bit more so the next thing we need is to be able to grease the bearings and I thought of all sorts of things you know putting a grease fitting in here but that needed drilling and all the rest of it so I thought the easiest thing to do was we'll just do what BSA did and we'll put a grease fitting on each side of that so you can pump through and fill it up also actually this thing will help because it'll uh, tend to keep the grease at both ends so I'm going to mark this up drill it and put uh, two little grease nipples in and remember when you do this put them on the bottom it may sound silly to put it on the bottom but don't forget 
on the top of the swinging arm you've got the battery carrier and the oil tank and all sorts of things whereas this way you can just simply go underneath and stick your uh, your grease line on so let me mark this up and then we'll uh, drill it and tap it these have a quarter inch 28 uh, threads per inch pitch these are actually the ones that they use in the BSA the B50 type swinging arm so I presume it's going to give us enough grease so let me do that I've got these marked up so now I'm going to uh, start them off with a centre drill because as I've mentioned before these things are wonderful and even on this tube they won't wander so it's a bit too big well it's a bit, the vice is too big to fit in the jaws so I'm just going to hold this because it's not uh, not much that I'm drilling <laughs> Two starter holes. Now we'll lower the table so we can uh, put a 5.5mm drill bit in. Which according to my little table is the right drill size for tap. Quarter 28. Yeah. Oops. We should be fine to just tap this by by hand here. Go.
and there we go. They will go in there, so we'll just deburr it a little bit. That's it. And this is ready for painting. And as I say, you put them on the bottom, and then you can get to them nice and easily. Whereas here, there would be all sorts of stuff in the way. So that's that done. Next time you see this, it'll be shiny black and on the bike.